Hi there, I'm your host Macaulay Tucker and you're listening to The Macaulay Tucker Show, the podcast where I sit down with some of the most accomplished and fascinating individuals in the entertainment and business industry. From celebrities to industry leaders, our guests offer unique perspectives and inspiring stories that will educate and inform you. Join me as I sit down with my next guest to cover their humble beginnings, challenges they faced, as well as their accomplishments in life. You are bound to learn something new, so sit back and enjoy the interview. Hey everybody, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Macaulay Tucker Show. Today we've got a very special guest, Chris Anthony. Chris Anthony is mostly known for being the voice of Barbie. She uh, was the first voice of Barbie, uh, the original voice of Barbie, and voice of Barbie for many, many years. She's also known uh, as Chris, the host of Adventures in Odyssey, the Christian audio drama. Today on the show, we're just going to be talking to Chris about her life, so sit back and uh, enjoy this interview. Like, I'm just really fast. I just want to, I would love to hear this. Um, voice acting. This is what you do as a profession. Um, and I just love, would love to hear, how did you get started in voice acting? There's a lot of different careers that you could have choose to go down. Uh, really? What really fascinated yeah. you about voice acting? When I first uh, started in my um, career, I uh, I wanted to be um, an on-camera actress where you mm. could you know, see me. I wanted to be in a sitcom. I wanted to um, I wanted to be kind of going down that road. And um, I got a lot of commercials. I had a great agent. She was so sweet. I think I was 18 when I went in to first see her. Her name was Nancy Washburn. And um, I was so green. I just go, went to her agency and I sat in this chair and I said, you know, I want to be this actress. And um, she was so nice. She just kind of looks at me. And she goes, well, what do you do, Chris? And I go, <laughs> I do voices and I was doing all this stuff to impress her and she goes hmm well I don't know really what to do with you but I have a feeling about you we're gonna have a lot of fun on the journey you know discovering what you do do really well so um she used to send me out on commercials that were so funny I mean she would send me on um like a a bride and she'd say Mm -hmm. go and you're gonna be this bride in this commercial and be you know be very ride like Chris and I I laugh when I think about it because you know it it wasn't what I knew how to do is to sit there and be pretty you know a bride so I would always end up doing some crazy impressions at these auditions which totally ruined the moment of what they wanted me for like a you know the, the serene bride and, and I do like impressions of seagulls and things and they never cast me for what I was on, but they would always cast me for something else. You mm. know? So they would find a different commercial and they'd say, well, this is what she be, would be good at. So um, I don't know. I just journeyed on with my commercial acting and got parts on sh- small parts on shows and things. Mm. And, and I think it was like one day I was sitting at this audition and, um, and it was a call for um, just a real glamorous uh, glamorous part for something and I remember sitting there and I'm kind of glancing around the room and there's all these really pretty w- women just just very um lovely and it's just their hair is styled and and their lipstick was all you know and I looked at me and I just kind of went <laughs> this is not any fun so I literally <laughs> this is the, the truth I went into the um, the ladies' room and I blacked out a front tooth. Oh wow! <laughs> I figured there's a room full of these beautiful women. There, who knows who they're gonna pick? I said, at least they're gonna remember me. <laughs> so I, I I went into the ladies' room. Of course, I was dressed as elegantly as I could. <laughs> My hair is all stunned, glossy lipstick, and. I went back and I just took like a makeup pencil and I blacked out a front too. <laughs> I said, okay, Chris, you're going to be so sorry for this, but you're going to do it anyway, aren't you? So the casting people in those days would be like sitting around like a table and they'd have headshots in front of them and they're interviewing each actress that would come into the room. And, and so they're just kind of like this sitting back and I kind of kept, I kind of talked a little bit like that. So Chris. Oh, your headshot, you know, nice. Here's the scene. We want you to act out the scene. <laughs> I'm like, I took my head and I went, all right. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> oh, 
was like watching a train wreck. <laughs> I had this blacked out too, and it was like they were laughing so hard. And I thought to myself, "Well, they'll remember me." <laughs> and so they said, "What? What made you choose to do that, Chris?" I said, "Have you seen the room out there? There's three million gorgeous girls." <laughs> Oh my. And guess what? They didn't cast me for that part, but got the part on another commercial, which was like a housewife doing something with them. <laughs> it was a little cleaner. <laughs> it, was really, it was really funny. So, oh my gosh, what was the question again? Oh, you want to know why I. <laughs> so, what I decided in my head, this is a lot of work dressing mm -hmm. up and doing this stuff. Some, uh, my agent sent me on an animation uh, audition, and um, I think it was like like a bug. I was like, hey, I'm a bug. I did this little movie to me, said, hey, the grass is really cool. And um, they booked me, like, bam, right away. And I went, <laughs> I didn't have to look anyway. I, I thought, the world of voiceover, you could be old. You could be, you could be in your ugliest hairdos you know you could be anything i could be an old lady i thought this is really freeing and i've always done impressions and voices mm -hmm. since i was a kid so so in my mind I went yeah send me a more of those i want to you know i want to do animation i want to do toy voices i want to do mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff and sure enough i went down that road and god started opening all kinds of really great things for me and gee i did answer the question of yes and that's awesome. And you, you mentioned a lot of really valuable things there. I know commercials um, and a lot of the guests that I've spoken with commercials play a big part um, of my guest life. And they kind of start in that and then gradually make their way into other things. But it's really cool to see that you're able to grow through all these different situations and yeah. gradually make, make it to one place to another. And you mentioned, you know, being interested in, in doing impressions uh, since you were a young kid. And I mentioned before recording that um, uh, I've, I've always enjoyed that. Um, I haven't really gone to add you know because i've talked with talking with bob he he talked a lot about how you know you have your character with a voice you have to connect a voice with a character and a lot of the time for me i just have loved experimenting with my vocal cords you know make my voice sound more gravelly and higher um and this you know fooling around with that and like you know making voices out like lower voice like, yeah T toys toys you uh did a, a lot uh, barbie barbie was one i did not know about this until like oh, yeah. I was like, wow, that's super cool. And I went down this whole rabbit hole of research. I found out that there was actually a movie prior to you actually doing the voice of the bar. It's like a very old movie. And I think what? Barbie. I didn't even know that one. Yeah, it was like, yeah, I don't know. I was just like, wow, this is super cool. And like, you know, I would love to ask you specifically, you know, and I found out recently Barbie fashion designer recently went to video yeah. game hall of fame. I'm like, that's so cool. And that must also be, you know, super awesome. I'd love just to ask, you know, as somebody who, has you know you barbie this was a big part of your life when you started out like yeah, i would love to hear about this it's funny because literally i remember playing with my sister on our bedroom floor playing barbies i mean you know mm -hmm. who would have thought <laughs> i get to be barbie no you get to be barbie i, get to be <laughs> I got to be barbie um it's really funny because i had at the time i was doing a lot of i was in a toy toy run i was doing lots mm -hmm. of things for fisher price educational toys and talking globes and talking horses and talking talking to <laughs> and then i got this one audition for um another doll and i say another doll because i did lots of dolls yeah i had no idea what it was for um who it was i just you know a baby doll or so um i got the audition and um i was uh, gonna go to mattel and, uh, and I, I tell the story periodically because mm -hmm. it's really important to my journey with her is um, there was an earthquake the day before, mm -hmm. um, going to Mattel to audition for a doll. And uh, I didn't know that it was Barbie at all. Mm -hmm. I ended up going <laughs> and not even knowing it was Barbie. Mm -hmm. Uh, the uh, the director had me audition on the phone before I went down there because there was so much chaos going on. And she says, well, I go, well, you know, on the phone, sure. Then he'll basically know if I'm right for the role of this new doll. And um, it was funny because I said, what would you like for me to say? This was Jacques Delong, the director at the time. And he says, well, we're looking for a certain voice and make her kind of warm. 
and kind of friendly. Like she would be every girl's, you know, best friend. And I went, mm-hmm. I got that. that. That's, that's a part of me. And, um, so I said, okay. So on the phone, what would you like for me to say? And he said, just say, um, hi, this is Barbie. Welcome to McDonald's. Mm. <laughs> you just say Barbie. <laughs> 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 sure, okay. Hi, it's me, Barbie. You look cool. Welcome to McDonald's. And he said nothing. <laughs> I went, oh, no. I'm, you know I, mean? I really want to try this one more time. He says, nope. Just come tomorrow. Come tomorrow. <laughs> and he knew something. His instinct knew, and I went the next day, performed the same thing in front of a bunch of people, and they booked me right there. And I went, oh. Wow. If God wants you to do a role or or do something, earthquakes and <laughs> tidal waves, it doesn't matter. You're gonna do what he has planned for you. So Yes. That's truly wonderful. And you had that amazing, amazing experience. And it, very lucky to have that awesome experience. And I know we both know um the new Barbie movie. And that must also be super cool too, because you're like, wow, this is you know, of there's been there's been a lot of amazing Barbie projects, and I and I know the story behind the oh, voice of Barbie, Barbie but there so there's so many Barbies <laughs> after that. Yeah. But like now that they're doing a Barbie movie, it's like wow, like this is the the peak, this is pinnacle, it's hit that. So I'd love to ask you, you know, with the new Barbie movie featuring you know Margaret Robbie as like iconic character, can I I you know can fans expect to hear I know like hearing your voice <laughs> in some capacity or even like a, a fun little <laughs> reference? I know of course hush hush environment but i'd love to ask you what do you what do you well i must say that um people go <laughs> this is funny <laughs> to me you know it's been a long time since i've done barbie yeah but once you're barbie it doesn't ever really go away you have that connection and it's so sweet because i have little kids that still come to my door <laughs> and go, can you be barbie <laughs> and i'm in my bathroom and i'm going yeah i can be barbie close your eyes hi it's me barbie <laughs> My daughter was little at the time, and she used to go, I don't want my mom to be Barbie. <laughs> she loved Barbie. And it was like, your mom's Barbie? Oh, no, this is horrible news. But um, I, I still I have, still have a strong connection to her mm-hmm. after all these years. Now, the movie's coming out. It is, you know, it has made it come to life again. And mm-hmm. uh, my career in Barbie, that is, um, there's many other Barbies. There's yeah. current Barbies now that are doing movies or videos. And, but I was ori- originally at the beginning stages of mm-hmm. um, Now that the movie's up, people go, why aren't you in the movie? And I went, <laughs> so because I'm old, <laughs> you have to laugh. They go, you should be in the Barbie movie. I go, uh, w- w- what I do is Barbie's mm. grandma? Well, hello there, kids. I'm Barbie's <laughs> grandma. <laughs> Uh, there's a new trailer out that I just watched for it. I'm not sure if you've seen it. It looks really funny. Yeah, it looks interesting. I know for the lady who's playing uh, Barbie, she had like the Truman Show in her like letterbox type thing. And so people were saying that it might be similar to the Truman Show because I watched the trailer and it looks as if, you know, Barbie escapes from the Barbie world and goes to the real world, which I'm like, I wonder, I was thinking about that before the interview. I'm like, I wonder if they'll have a nod or reference to, you know, because real world, there's of course Barbie products. So uh, basically, you know, the, the your game, Barbie fashion designer will most likely exist in, in this world uh, because Mattel exists. I know one of your other I- iconic roles um, like Barbie, I guess you could say like has impacted a lot of lives in many ways um, is Chris from Adventures in Odyssey. You know, you, you're playing the host of Adventures in Odyssey. Um, you, you've been doing that for, for many, many years now. You've impacted a lot of different people's lives. You've been heard on the radio and other different locations around the world and that's that's truly wonderful this is a very interesting question and you know you are kind of you're playing kind of like a storyteller the host um and you have the power to shape you know the thoughts and emotions of the audience you know when they begin to the episode and i'd love to ask you you know how let me tell you folks that's Mm -hmm. a good interviewer he do he just he kind of he's just doing it just right i mean i gotta stop you because macaulay people just don't understand that a good interviewer can make a big difference for the person being interviewed that was just like a little commercial <laughs> but but I, I haven't heard it phrased quite like that so <clears throat> go ahead don't mind me 
like, so you are playing, you're kind of the storyteller. And I love to hear, you know, how do you approach that responsibility, you know, of being the storyteller of Adventures in Odyssey and, and the potential impact you, the stories have, you know, your stories can have on the well-being of the listeners? That's a, that's a really good question. I have no idea. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, Adventures in Odyssey, out of my whole career, is probably my dearest favorite thing that I do. Mm-hmm. And it's um it's like no other. I mean, you can get a gig doing voices on some animation or a toy or Adventures in Odyssey. Um it's it's it captured my heart and I am mm-hmm. just so a part of that world. Uh, the fact that I'm still there after thirty five years, wow, thank you, God. You could have replaced me and said, Thank you, Hi, this is Marie <laughs> to the Chris. I've done that for 35 years, open to show the same way. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. You still have to write me the script. To it, so yeah. That. <laughs> but I'll tell you, the writing is on the pulse of what kids are going through in the real world. Mm-hmm. So good. They write it. And it's sometimes I I can't wait to get, you know, I get one in the mail. I, I listen to it and I go, oh, that was so good. Sometimes I cry. Sometimes I'm laughing my head off. But the writing is just excellent. And all the production is top notch. The directors, the writers, the foley, the all oh, the sound effects. It's just and God mm-hmm. puts this together, and it's like it's like nothing else. Kids have such junk out there to choose from. There's yeah, so much just things that just don't build you up. It's just always a distraction, you know. And mm-hmm. I think I feel the the most proud of being part of adventures and odyssey because i know it's got good stuff and it's feeding good stuff out to the world you know and and yes it has a strong faith-based uh show you know it's like even if you aren't you know uh, a believer mm-hmm. you listen and you go wow that's good for my soul yes it, it's it's just so well done and the people after 35 years are my family i know katie lee will tell you the same or townsend mm-hmm. has been on it for years you go into the studio and it's like, hi, how's it going? How's your kids? Oh, how about that? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's like going home. It's like, you know, going home to see your family. And when they say there's a, an Adventures in Odyssey recording session, I literally am so happy. So happy because kids, okay, can we talk? <laughs> they have me call kids. It just strokes me up when I think about it. <laughs> And I get to call kids and I get to talk to them. And they'll mm-hmm. say, maybe certain kids to call. Maybe they're going through something. Maybe it's a special birthday. And I've been doing this for years, too. On mm-hmm. the surprise or the clubs having a promotion. The, you know, the Adventures of Aussie Club. And I get to call kids mm-hmm. and talk to them. And it's just the best. Because I'll say, hi, it's Chris. And they'll go, oh, what? Oh. Oh. <laughs> It's just like, it's like, that's how I want to feel. You know, somebody wants to talk to me. And they go get their sisters and brothers and then their mom and their grandmas. Everybody's on the phone asking questions and talking. And <laughs> can it get any better than that? So I'm calling people and I'm connecting to their lives. You know, you, you do this recording and sometimes you don't see the faces, but mm-hmm. you know, live shows you do. You, know, you can see. But when on the phone calls, I'll get parents and grandparents have been listening since their kid they are kids and then they grew up and and they're just um telling me how much it means to them adventures mm-hmm. and I'm just a very small part of it but um I love the phone calls Adventures is honestly, there, there's a few newer episodes that I haven't really been able to cover but you know you are the host you are the host of Adventures and Odyssey um and you 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 talk about Adventures and Odyssey and this is one question I have and you know I don't know if it's explained at all but do you you're not you're playing kind of yourself but does does chris live in adventures and Odyssey? Does, does chris know these people oh, if you know what i'm wow. saying like, I, it's kind of more like a, i don't know i what, what do you i guess more like what do you think because i've always listened to him, like you know chris is talking about and that's one thing that's always been hitting me i'm like does well, chris yeah what do you um, think people go why doesn't chris go on the show <laughs> why doesn't chris and the world's connect i go i keep asking them you know why can't Chris go to Odyssey? And they go, you can't. You can't. That's that's a two different worlds. Ooh, okay. He is the one who talks about that. 
If you mm. put her in it, it's like it, it's a different connection. You know what I mean? Yeah. Huh. I thought years ago they did like a kind of a documentary thing where she was in Odyssey driving around. Ooh. She was talking about Odyssey. She was over there is Cat McAllister this and she was saying hi. She says was saying hi to people. I okay. Oh <gasps> long time ago. I don't know what episode that was, but I like it was like kind of a yeah. Very years. But then they decided because people do want her to go to Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> too that they're trying to not make her um, yeah cross that line okay not quite wrapping up but you know voice acting you've done a lot of different characters one i know you talked about this well, in a few interviews uh you done a different range of characters with different ranges of personalities fallout you, that was an interesting one so i wanted to ask you yeah like um doing voices how do you you know experience working on fallout you know different from radio dramas and what aspects of voicing a character in a video game did you find particularly fallout intriguing is- yeah there's a few things in the works I can't talk about. Yeah, but of course. <laughs> Fallout, I can because Fallout was so funny. It's like I auditioned for a lot of things. I'm with AVO Talent, and I've had the same agents for, what, 30 years? So they know me, but I love them because they still give me um, opportunities to do different roles. It's not like I get kind of into the, you know, yeah. one area. So, um I had an audition for, I, I think it was like a computer voice, and and she was talking kind of like this, and uh, and it was like, but uh, I I get it, did something a little different with her, and um, so they liked whatever I did. I'm trying to remember the voice, and they booked her and booked her booked me, and um, it was really different. And then they said, well, if she's going to do the computer voice, can she do this? Um, kind of monster uh doctor she was like <laughs> had been exposed to radiation and and so her whole <laughs> it was like it was right out looking thing and uh it was just so much fun because <laughs> i got to do her really you know the voice Ooh. like you know stepping up here <laughs> and she was down here and she was more like that and darker you know yeah fun and i thought yeah i do do both and because in my mind i'm you give me a role and i'm gonna i'm gonna bring whatever i got to it so it was fun fallout was a a fun and then they booked me on fall uh, the next fallout and so i got to i got to do a bunch of different roles doing that and and, um again it was it was fun but it was more Mm -hmm. fun meeting people on the, the actual um job i always always like a- ending on a good note like what's one thing that you would like to pass on to any of the listeners oh listening that you would that you think would like educate them and inform them people look at their life and they go i'm doing this one job i'm on a job right now and it's like this is like so i don't want to be doing this this is horrible but it's part of your journey mm-hmm. you never know how that's going to add to the later things you're going to be doing. So invest in what you're doing. Don't hate it. Get all you can from it. Do the best you can because you're going to take that part of your life and that job. And that's going to help you with the next thing coming up. And I've said that so many times because I was doing jobs and things in my younger years going, why am I doing this? And I think I later used some of those things that mm-hmm. I took it with me and now, if I'm asked to do an event and I'm standing on a stage and I think I had to improvise and all that other job, well, I took all those improvising skills and I'm now I'm okay to improvise and just enjoy your journey and don't compare with anybody else. But calling, don't go looking at his career or his steps and how he's doing it. You do it the way you're doing it because that's how God designed you to do your own journey. You might have to compete, but you don't have to compare to anybody else. Exactly. If you're doing it different, amen, that's how you do it. Mm -hmm.